Greetings, I'm Dr. Eileen O'Connor, and I'm going to be showing you Spoke, which is Mozilla Hub's development space for creating VR chat rooms. Now, Mozilla Hub's is very much under development with what they're doing here, so things are most likely going to change. What I'll be doing is creating a long video and showing you how you can learn using some of the pre-developed materials. I'll be using pre-developed materials and then adding my own materials and talking about what I've learned in the process. Now, I will be reverse engineering from a project that was made available by an artist and show you how you can start doing some of your own learning. And I will be making slides to go along with this. And in the slides, I'll give more information as I learn more. So this is Hubs under development and me under learning this. So thank you for joining. Now, if you've worked with development software for any length of time, you know there are at least two ways to do everything. I'll show you how I work, and I'm going up under File just to go back to the starting point. I want to go back and show you projects that I've created. And there are a whole group of projects that I've used and not covered here, but you can start with projects that are already created by others. Mozilla has made a number of them available. What you want to keep in mind is your audience. If you intend to have this used quite generally by a lot of people, you want to keep things as simple as possible. A great thing about hubs is that you can view it from a cell phone, you can view it from Chromebooks, you can view it from lovely laptops, desktops, and you can even use a VR headset. So you're going to find that I have picked a number and played with them already, but you'll often see this basic crater. The crater is where the environment I'm going to be showing you started. And people start with this plain crater space. And in this one, I have one little thing over here. But what you can do are find things available by others and figure out what you want. Again, though, if you intend to have an audience that is going to be rather limited in coming in, you don't want things that have lots of polys, lots of triangles, and I'll talk about those later. So simple is generally better. I picked something that was sort of in the middle. So I'm going to go back up to the room that I chose, and I'm loading it in. I'll start here with the basic layout of the development spoke area. So we're in spoke. Spoke, and I think it's hubs and spoke. Spoke is where you actually create the design in the background. Now, what I did was I cheated and I got um, a space that was available for others, uh, made available by others, and I'm left clicking and dragging so that you can get a sense of what's in this space. And I'll be showing you particular spots. Now, if you can notice in the bottom left, I have other options. These will change. This tells me what mouse button I can use, whether I can fly. It took me a while to realize RMB was right mouse button, but some of you might be a little more intuitive with this. So I'm just clicking and dragging to pan around so you can see what's in the space, and we'll talk about some of these areas. Now, this area itself is known as the viewport. You can see over here it's called the viewport. This is where you will be able to see what you're putting in your scene. This is a scene that you're creating that you can then later use as part of a room that someone could go to. And I've used mostly what people have put here, but you can see I put in a logo sign and a few other things. Now, a nice feature is that when you're in the space, I'm left clicking on a PC and dragging to reduce different sizes to these frames that you have. So that I can show you what else is available. And I want you to be thinking of this as a way to teach yourself as you're going through. I'll show you how I've kind of learned. But this box down here are where all of your assets are kept. These are things that you either have already specifically put into your scene or things that you can put in. And if you look on the left, there are some of the options that are available, but let's look at what the elements are. And as I mouse over this and hover, it gives you a brief description of what this is. Now, it's not going to be necessarily enough for you to learn from it, but use a combination of different areas to teach yourself. And 
I'll be, again, demonstrating some of this, but much of this you're going to want to play with on your own. There are ways that you can, uh, lighting is going to be important because whether you want this scene to have light from a particular light source, all of these things will make a difference. And what I have found is you have to kind of play with it to understand how it works. If you've worked with gaming engine software, such as Unity or Unreal Engine, you've already played with these. So you have different lights. Spawn points is where you establish as the developer where an avatar is going to land when they first come into your location. So those will be places you can set up. A waypoint is a place that you can set that people can teleport to later. And I've had mixed, mixed luck with those. There are also things that you can imagine here. You can upload your own images and I'll show you how that gets done. You can bring in a video. You can bring in audio. Uh, I'm not sure that I remember what a spawner is myself. A link is you can link to other websites. You can also link to other rooms that you've created. So I'll show you that. Uh, particle emitter allows you to create some animations. Simple water is used in the outsides of your islands. I haven't played with that myself. There's also a media frame that allows you to bring objects in. Uh, I've not had too much success with that myself. So uh, I have to admit, I'm not really good at defining the different media, but you can decide whether you want to bring in video, whether you want to bring in PDFs. So you make choices. Now, when I click over on the left, you can see my assets. These are things that I've already loaded. And these are pictures that I can use now or later. There are also models. Now I haven't, I don't think I've uploaded too many models. The the um, Mozilla Hubs itself allows you to, I should say spoke, allows you to upload many different things. Now you want to be careful though. If you put too many things in, it takes up space, it takes up memory, and it's going to be harder for people to access your room from low, low entry devices, low bandwidth. So you will see lots of things that might look very exciting, but uh, I will say proceed with caution use selectively because, as you might guess, the more detail, the more space it's going to take, the more bandwidth. So you can put these things into your islands, but be selective. Google Poly has many, many lovely items that you can bring in as well. But Google, Google Poly right now is going away. I'm hoping they'll reconsider that, but right now we can't really plan on it. You can bring in images from Bing, you can bring in Bing videos, you can bring in GIFs. So there are many items that are already available that you can bring in. Uh, a very nice one, if you want to work from scratch, is the architecture kit, which allows you to design from scratch a building. Very good if you're working with K-12 kids who need to get into uh, CAD, computer-aided design. So lots of features you can play with in here. So I'm now shrinking that to show you though what we're going to do mostly here is look at what others have already done. Now you want to learn how to learn so you'll find that this I'm just going to be modeling things that you can do come up with your own learning style but I'm now going to look at the island itself excuse me the scene I should use the right nomenclature the scene that hub has made available to me through Spoke. This was created not by one of the Mozilla teams, if I remember correctly. It was created by somebody else, and it's called the Fall Village. If you can see up in the right corner, that happens to be the name there. And what you want to get used to, now I'm clicking and dragging, is that you have the hierarchy, which shows you what's in the space, in layers. So if you want to hide something behind something else, you would move the layers. But what you want to find is the properties. And so when I have my fall village highlighted, I can see more about how it was created. It's the root object of the scene. And I think if I pull out, well, it doesn't really do helpful. If you look, there's my crater in the background. This particular person developed everything on top of the crater. Notice the grid when you come in. As far as I've found to date, 
The grid isn't numbered, which takes me a little while to figure out how to work with it, but everything is placed on this grid. I'm clicking and dragging so you can see the grid. Now, there is something known as a skybox, and skybox is just that. It's the sky above, and you can put in different types of skies. Now, this is not a very sophisticated program in terms of things you might be used to from VR environments. It's not going to be a changing sky, but you do have areas that you can control. And so, again, I just took the default here. But if I'm going to make it take it off so it's not visible, I guess I go to blue skies then. But I'm going to put back what the artist created here. Now, the lighting, again, will determine how your scene will actually look. You don't have a lot of control. Uh, this is, again, not robust VR, but it, it allows you to make some choices about lighting. And there are different ways of lighting things. Now, the spawn point here tells you where an avatar is going to land when they come into your room. So I'm going to also be opening a room to show you how this actually looks. Because right now, you're seeing the static version where you're creating things. So I'm going to stop and bring you over to a ver a, an instance of this right now. This is a room that I opened, and when you first come in, this is where you land. So I'm just scrolling around. I'm not moving my avatar yet so that you'll get a perspective of what this looks like. So the spawn point is where your avatar lands. If there's more than one person coming in at the same time, they kind of inch over but you can set how many different spawn points you want. So I'm clicking back over to that at this point. And I think this is a little bit off. I'm going to bring this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I clicked back over to the spokes itself, and you can see that these are my spawn avatars. And it's important, I'm using my left mouse uh, scroll wheel to scroll in, that you think about what your avatar is going to be seeing. Now, when I come in really close, you'll see that there's a directional arrow that shows me where that particular avatar that comes in at that spawn point, spawn point is going to be looking. Again, the spawn point is where avatars land when they first walk into the room. And you consider the orientation. You also can put it in and use these little directional things to determine how high or low that spawn point is. The pyramid on the bottom is the bottom of the avatar. And one thing you have to keep in mind is people can actually be looking at this through headsets. I don't know all those views myself, so I went with the default. You can also, if you look over in the properties, you can change the size of the avatars. You can scale it to something different. I'm going to scale it to three. And you can see this would be a very big avatar. So if this one came in, they would be very big. I'm going to return it to the one. I'm literally just typing. And unless you go into it manually, all three dimensions change at once. So the spawn point is where they come in. I double clicked on spawn point and just moved over to that quickly. And again, you can get a better sense of how spawn points allow you to determine where somebody's looking when they come in. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see all the other features that are in this space. And this has a fair number of interesting uh, bales of hay. I can tell here I have several bales of hay. And what I've discovered is I can go over by double left clicking and I'll be brought over to where this is. Okay, so here's Autumn Tree 2. No, that's not too interesting. Let me Let me show you one of the other trees that are more interesting. Uh, actually, I had a second thought before I leave. Notice that this tree was made quite simply to reduce the number of triangles that go into it. That's something the person who creates these objects, often in another program and upload them, generally keeps in mind. Well, actually, while I'm here, I'm going to, I double left click, I should explain that first, on this little pumpkin patch that's here. Now, the pumpkin patch with leaves falling on it, those are animated features that are not part of the pumpkin patch, is something I could move around, but I think be careful before you arrange 
what artists have already put in. But I want you to notice that up here is a statistic. And it shows you, in this case, because the pumpkin patch is selected, you see the blue around it, I can tell something about how many triangles are in the pumpkin patch. Later on, you're going to have to determine if your space is too big, uh, excuse me, if your um, spoke is becoming too big a scene and it'll be difficult for others to see it, you might want to look back and see how many triangles either you've created or someone else has created. Now I'm going to click over here on this building, which is, whoops, brought me out. This building is a farm building, and I can see in the barn how many triangles that's using as well. So this statistic becomes important. While I'm over here too, let me show you this feature that helps you look at your environment from different ways. If you are really using this to learn how to do CAD programs, this can help you. I'm not sure what normals are. Uh, for any of you who maybe have done more with gaming, I'm left-clicking and dragging, but you can, feed, you can show normals. I'm going back to the lit version because that makes it easiest for me to see. So when I look through the hierarchy list, I'll notice that okay, the hierarchy shows me what I'm on, but down here, because I'm selected over in the viewport, I'm selecting the barn. I can see the properties for the barn. And the person who made it even called it low poly. Polys are just how many shapes are in it. So that's a good thing. You want to have low polys if you're going to have people who are using this on cell phones. Now, if you know everyone's going to be on a desktop, you can use something fancier with more work in it. And what I advise you to do, too, is to look through the different properties for each of these objects that you either create or that you're learning about from someone else. This one tells me it's a 3D model in my scene. It was loaded from GLTF URL or file. And this tells me that whomever made it, made it in Sketchfab. And it has a collidable. That means you, can, you can't walk through it. It actually, you will collide with that. Those are things you can choose to enable or disable. I'm going to leave it collidable because that's what the developer created. So in your hierarchy, you can go around double clicking to see where all of these different features are. And I'm learning about this myself. I can find low poly grass. So low poly is goodness in this field. And fences, uh, I think of uh, bales of hay. Let me find those. There are a number of bales of hay in this case, it looks like they have one, and they've repeated it. And the way this is set up is that the bales of hay with the avatars on top of them is pointing towards the media. So this will let you know that when you have a number of people coming in to maybe see a presentation or hear, this will help them focus over on where they have to go. Now, I'll use this to introduce the concept of the um, waypoints. Now I just left clicked on that particular avatar, which brings it up. I'm going to do it twice. And where did it go? It should be highlighted. Here it is. It's waypoint number four. Now this is something that you don't see when you first come in. And I had a little trouble with waypoints myself, so I don't know if it's my lack of understanding or if it's something that it's going to be improved with time, but I'm scrolling in. My waypoint lets me put in an avatar, and I can see through the arrows what the avatar is going to be looking towards. So if I want all of my avatars here to be looking towards the presentation, I'd want to orient them that way. And when I click it, I can move them around. I can change. I can rotate them over here. You have features that you can change about the different avatars. So again, you line them up where you want to. Now, I want to show you the version that I created a little bit earlier and published. So as I did before, I'm clicking over to that. And I flipped myself around. I'm left clicking and dragging so you can see the environment. This is what we were looking at a little while ago. And there are waypoints over here, but it took me a while to figure out how to see them. I'm now pressing the 
uh, space bar on my computer. And lo and behold, there they are. Um, I'm going to try to click on one and see where it brings me. I'm left clicking. Okay, and it moved me over into this area. Now, when I click on the space bar again, I see other way, waypoints that are available. And so but I can just teleport to those quickly. I don't have to try to nudge my avatar over and find it. And if you recall, these were set up so that they orient themselves around this media screen where you can then show movies, you can show presentations, other media can be brought in. When somebody is here, they can actually use it. I'm just moving back over to the spoke version. Now, if I change things here, I would have to publish it, which means save it for those to be active. So what I'm doing is now clicking, dragging around. I want to show you a couple more features. Now, one of the things that is good about the spoke version is here is where you put things that you want to be permanently in your island. I'm sorry, I clicked something and moved myself out. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my scroll wheel to bring myself in closer. Oh, this shows you an interesting point here. Let me bring this over. The I put in a slide that is about how you design when you're first starting to learn about a new space. I'm adjusting this window to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, this was just uh, a JPEG or a PNG that I created and I'm using it in some of my courses. And when you scroll in, you'll see it just goes over a schematic about designing and teaching yourself how to work in new types of spaces. So that's just an image. I uploaded it, and there is an upload feature. Now I clicked over into the assets under My Assets. And you'll see here that I've already uploaded a number of pictures. And I can use them any sort of way. I can use them in any number of projects. But this one is the one that you'll see in this particular setting, and it was my design schematic. So I uploaded that, and I clicked it, and it's already here, so I don't want to take it out. It's in the environment. One of the things I find difficult for me is situating these. I'm The green arrow is Z, and it goes up and down. I do not intuitively work in this dimension. The red and the blue move it uh, against the floor. In this case, you can see the grid below. If you are not too good at this, as I am, you can also use the properties box on the bottom. And it's, I've got a name, it's a PNG. I named it, it's visible, I can make it invisible. And I can change the position, I can change the size. So if I want this to be much bigger, because I'm going to be teaching people from it, I just changed one of the dimensions. It, by default, puts them all to the same size. I'm just going to reduce it again. So any picture that you bring up, you can put into your space. These don't take up a ton of room, unlike the buildings that have many different triangles. But you'll have to ultimately think about the layout from the person who comes in and visits your work. To view how this would look, I'm going to go over to the version that I downloaded earlier and opened up. So this was the one that I was showing you the adjustments. Here's one that I put in with the logo of the school. You'll see that if you go back, these do not take up a lot of room in terms of bandwidth and size of the file. But the buildings in the back have more pieces, more, more triangles, more polygons. They take up more space. Now I'm going to go back and show you something here that is very helpful, but not helpful to look at. These links in the back, they, they do look like links. When I click on one of them, you'll see that this was created by using the link feature and bringing in an actual website, so to speak. Let me bring this up. Now, what I have done was created a number of other hub rooms. And when you go over to the room, you can get the website link. And I'll show you that when we leave. So this is the URL to a different room. And what I've done was put out several of these links. I'll show you how I did this. I went over under the elements 
me obviously rearrange the screen a little bit. And I want to find the one. This would be if you want to have an image that you want to bring in. And it says dynamically uploads. That means that you can use this in other places beyond this one particular project. Uh, I'm sliding down. Okay, here's the link. And I'm going to get myself in the way here. Move this over. When I hover over the link, it says it's a link to a hubs room or a website. So you would go and get the link to the hubs room in this case. And what I'll show you is what it looks like when you put these in. So I did that earlier, and here's my link. Notice, though, that when I move myself out of the way, you don't see what it's linking you to. And in this case, it is linking me to another hub's room. And if you, I'm clicking over on the different ones, and you'll notice that when I do this, the link changes. The, it, it's a hub link, but the URL shifts a little bit based on the room that it's going to go to. Now, when you actually show this, there is a picture. And take a look at this viewport here. This is the area that you see. And it's not a true rendition of what somebody coming into your room will see, but it's what you as a developer see. When you publish this, which we'll look at later, when you publish it, it takes whatever this picture is and stores it along with the publication. And when somebody looks at your link, if it was to a hub's room, the picture that it took at that point in time is the picture that's displayed. The picture then that you're going to see of these different links, and I'll bop, bop, slip over to that, will be what was there the last time when that picture was taken, when that room was created. And honestly, I'm not that thrilled with the work that I've done. This, since you really want to optimize space, you could make signs and bring them in, but ideally you want these pictures to show what you're expecting. And these are the views that you're going to get in these different rooms, but I think I could have chosen better. This one here, and I'm not sure if I can focus in too much. Let me see if I can do a focus here. I can't remember how to get closer. Is a, a nice fantasy island type of a river space, and you can get a sense of that. This one happens to link to a room that I used and put a video in, and I'll show you that in a moment. But uh, think carefully before you publish any one of your rooms because that picture in your viewport is what people will see. Okay, I went back to the development spoke area, and I'll show you a few more things for this video. But this is simply looking at the ways you can create rooms, learning from a combination of what others have done. Most of this material was created by others. I loaded up a couple of pictures, and I made links to some of my other rooms. And what you need to do ultimately is now publish this. And again, there's more than one way to do every one of these things. I could open it directly. I could publish it. But along the way, too, you're going to want to make sure you're saving a project. Supposing you're not ready to publish it. I've named it before. So this, well, let me see. It's, yeah, I've named it before. So this one is just prompting me to save the project. I could have hit Control S. So it will take to however many things I added. It didn't, well, it didn't take me too long. So I had all of these. I just showed you some differences. Now, when you publish to hubs, it depends on how large the environment is, how long it's going to take for it to be published. But notice here, you give it a name. Now, I had the name before. I attribute it to myself. Now, if I really thought I had something wonderful that I want other people to use, and remember, your name's going to be associated with it, I could publish it and allow it to be remixed. That means somebody else could use this basic material, which was created by somebody else initially. And the new pieces I added would be something that would be now part of what goes on to, to be shared with others. If you notice, too, I could let Mozilla promote my scene. Well, I don't have anything I'm particularly proud of, so 
I'm turning these off, but if you have designed something from scratch or have taken something and are remixing it, it will automatically attribute the original designer, but your new work will be uh, attributed as well. So after this, an important step comes up and shows you how big your room is. Now, I know from the past, my room is pretty big. It has a lot of materials in it that use a fair amount of bandwidth. And so it's kind of yelling at me. It's telling me that my triangle counts are high. Um, my, I have a lot of unique materials. So if I were very concerned and I wanted to only make this available to people who are coming in, for example, with a cell phone, I might go back at this point, decide whether I need every one of those barns, whether I need all the trees, what is it I need, and I could make the scene uh, less um, bandwidth intensive. But I, I will assume that everybody's coming in on a desktop or a laptop. Keep in mind that they will have the benefit of automatically being able to access this from the web. So they don't have to let download a viewer. But if it's too big, they may not be able to get in. Now, after the scenes publish, you're invited to go in. Now, I had opened a version previously that's going to, it's not going to look too different. But now I will actually see, because I've asked to go in, if I'm going to create this room, create a room with the scene that I just noticed, noted, and I think note two here. These are the models. These are the um, images that I uploaded. You, you see that they're resing it, they're drawing them. And I'm going to go in and create the room. I could have edited it, but I just want to go into the room right now and it's loading the objects. I will enter. I am not using um, a headset, so I'm not going to use that. I'll just join the room. Notice, too, that it gives me some silly names. It tests my mic. I could test the audio if I wanted to. And as I speak, you see the mic's going, so I'm okay with that. And I'm now entering the room. And all of the other materials that I had in here, uh, the, the objects, don't show up because I'm not really going to uh, be needing those. The spawn points, those are just for the developer. And here are the rooms that I linked in. Now, these are actual rooms. And I'll close with showing you how when I link over to the Santa room, what happens here. Now, I'm just clicking it. It's one of those um, kind of bubbles that you can use to have different areas. It was a Christmas motif, and I can move in. And I hadn't realized this. When I click, uh, it's not doing it right here. It does have some spawn points. I got this from somebody else. I'm not exactly sure who made it, but if I look in, I can see I have objects. This, oh, this was made by, no, that's a different room by Mozilla. This is um, one of the I can't figure why that picture's here. Maybe I took a picture of this, but it's something to look like it's under a globe. And they have a little animation here with the Santa Claus. So not covered here, but people can now come in. They can walk around if you've given them the link to this room. Now, when I did click on the link to bring me over to the Christmas ball, I closed myself out of the other room. Now, if you were a designer, you might decide in this room to put a link bringing them back to the other room. Uh, there are a lot of issues you can think about in terms of how you design the navigation, but each room is separate, and you don't want the rooms to be too big because you want to be mindful of bandwidth. So I'm just going back, I'm clicking back to my original spoke development just to show you it was open in another panel and... I invite you to go in, create projects of your own, and use some of the rooms that are available. I will go back to my projects. Use rooms that are available and start modifying them for what it is you want to bring in. And it's probably the easiest way to learn. So have fun. Make the basic scene. I use the nomenclature properly. Scene is what you make. It's the outside, the envelope, and when people go into your room, they can bring in models as well. But unless they pin the model to the room, 
the model is not going to stay. So spoke is where you actually do the bulk of the work if you want to be a developer. And then when you invite people into your rooms, then you go over into what is it you want them to do, which is highly important. But often we get kind of hung up in the development uh, area. So be mindful of both. And thank you very much.